Hello and welcome to this video lecture where we will work through the SAM Word 3 project. Log into the SAM site with your student ID and in the activity list tab find the Word 3 project. We'll start this project now. You're allowed five attempts. As you already know, this is the third Word project, so you're probably familiar with these one, two, three steps of start file, uh, instruction start file, and uploading your work. If not, go back to the first videos uh, for Microsoft Word, and we'll talk a little more about it there. But at this point, I'll assume you know what's going on, so I'll just download the instructions for this assignment. We have the protected view yellow bar at the beginning. I'm going to enable editing because we trust the data from this site. And our getting started uh, initial setup work is the same here. Download the start file. It has an, your name underscore one. Change it to underscore two. There is a support file that we'll use a little bit. We'll do the support file when we get to that step and make sure that your name appears in the footer. So let's do that. Let's go back and get our support file. Download that and open it up. You will see uh, here's what the file looks like in protected view. I can enable the protected view. So the first page is basically empty and the second page has a table. But there's a footer that says this file created for and then a student name. If you want to turn on the uh, oh, sorry. Let me go ahead and save this as underscore two. So I'm going to save it in the desktop so I know where it's at. I change, the only thing I'm changing is the one to a two. And now I have in the title bar across the top here, uh, student name underscore two. So that's good. And I know it's saved in the desktop. Now the first page is blank. There's a footer at the bottom. This page created specifically for your name. The second page has a table that goes on to the third page. If you uh, turn on the uh, paragraph marks, we might do that from time to time during this assignment. We'll see that there's just a blank, single blank paragraph there and then a page break, which is what scoots us down to the next page. So that's all fine. That seems weird, but that's actually the way it's supposed to be. So let's get started here. After earning an associate's degree at uh, Central Florida Technical College, you are ready to apply for a position in hotel management. You have already prepared a draft of a resume and cover letter to send to your ideal employer. Now you need to complete the document. Begin by changing the document margins to normal. So in the your name underscore two file, go under the layout and change the margins to be normal margins. Step two is to change the page orientation to be portrait. So going back to your file under the layout tab, there's an orientation. Set that to portrait and change the theme colors of your document to be blue green as the theme color. So in the design tab, there is themes and to the right of the themes, there is colors and that's the theme colors option. And we want to do this one to be blue green is our uh, instructed theme color change. Step four, insert a rectangle at the top of the first page and then format it as follows to have a height of 0.53, a width, some other things. So first, let's do this. Insert a rectangle at the top of the first page. So on this first page, and I'm going to go back to the Home tab, and I'm going to click this little paragraph symbol that toggles showing and hiding the formatting symbols uh, so I know where I'm doing it. So right here, I want to do it above the page break. I want to insert a rectangle. So under the Insert tab, under the Shapes group, there is an option for the fourth option here is Rectangle. So I'm going to click that, and then I'm just going to paste a little rectangle there. Now I'm going to resize it here in just a, mat a minute. It doesn't matter how big uh, or wide we make the rectangle because our instructions are to set the height to 0 0.53 and the width to 6.5. So selecting the rectangle draws up the Drawing Tools option. And in this Drawing Tool, I can set the height to 0 0.65. Is that what it was? Oh, 53. Sorry, 0 0.53. zero point five three and I can set the uh, width to six point five okay so now my rectangle has those dimensions that it were instructed to part B says to change the position of the rectangle using the and this actually should be in bold it's okay that it's not but we're using the position in top center with square text wrapping option 
So position group, there is this one here that is position in top center with square text wrapping option. So we select that. And then we change the text wrapping to be top and bottom. So with the rectangle selected, text wrap, find the top and bottom option. And there's top and bottom option. And then apply the moderate effect aqua, comma, accent one, shape style. So for our shape styles, we're going to do uh, something, I think it's down here, moderate effect dash aqua, accent one. Moderate effect is aqua comma accent one. So yes, it is. Step five, type Nicole Rawlings in the rectangle. So I'm going to right click here and say add text. Nicole Rawlings. Be careful with your spelling. It's very picky. N-I-C-O-L-E space R-A-W-L-I-N-G-S. And by the way, when I have this tab on and off, you'll see that the some symbols change. And we'll zoom in here, make it a little easier to see what we're doing. When I turn this on, I see the page, page break and I see the hard carriage returns. I see the anchor tell me where this picture is formatted. I see the little dot uh, that represents the space between Nicole and Rawlings. Uh, and when I toggle it off, all I see is what's going to be printed. I guess the anchor is still shows up. The anchor shows up whenever you click the, uh, uh, I don't know why the anchor, when it shows up, when it doesn't. But uh, the point is, there's nothing, there's not a period or a dot between Nicole Rawlings, but if you show the paragraph spacing, spaces have little dots and the paragraph symbols have dots. So type Nicole Rawling, increase the size of the text to 22 points. So select that text, the whole thing, increase it to 22 point. Apply the fill white outline accent one shadow word art style. So I want to do a word art style, which is here, not the shapes, but the word art styles. And I want to do, uh, I think it's this one, fill is white and um, the outline accent one is shadow, or I'm sorry, actually it's fill is, yes. So that, that is the, uh, uh, the correct fill white comma outline accent one shadow. And it may be different on your system. So uh, see if that's the case. On the blank line below the rectangle, enter the following text. So I'm just going to get this text, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to uh, paste it in here. Now, I'm toggling the show hide again, because I want to see, make sure I have my cursor in the right place. There's a blank line below the rectangle. That's what the instructions tell us, on the blank line below the rectangle. So I've got the cursor where I want it. I can untoggle that now. And I want to paste, and I'm going to be careful to paste just the text, not the formatting. So under paste, I'm going to choose these options, and the rightmost option is keep text only. So there I've got that text um, without any formatting. So it's just using the default formatting that we already had, Calibri, Light, 11, whatever it was beforehand. Insert a dot symbol between the zip code 31524 and the area code 727 in parentheses, and insert a second dot symbol between the phone number 555-4512 and the in Rawlings on the email. Insert spaces as necessary so that one space appears before and after each dot symbol. Use the symbol character code 583. Now I think that's actually wrong. I don't think that's the code we want to use. If you scroll down to the final figure, you'll see here in this final figure what we're trying to do when we're when we're going to be finished here is it's a pretty large bullet looking circle. And that's not the 183 that they have in those instructions. So let's go back up to our instructions here. And I don't want to do the, uh, I don't want to do 183. But I do want to place here between the zip code and the number, I do want to insert a symbol. So I'm going to say insert symbol. But the symbol I want is this darker symbol, this bullet symbol. And mine shows up because I've done it in my document recently. If yours doesn't show up, what you'll have to do is you'll have to search for it in the midst of it. And where you'll find that bullet symbol is it's actually character code in hex 
it's a 95 in decimal it's a 64 okay unicode it's 40 decimal 64 hex but oops i'm sorry let me go ahead and insert that and then i can come back later and look at it so i inserted it and there's a space before it and a space after it if i see those spaces by toggling the uh, show hide paragraph marks i can see the little small dot for the before and after and do the same thing here after the uh, phone number so insert symbol and i want to get that larger bullet and i can see the space before and the space after okay so get that large bullet when you're doing that insert change the font color of the address to white uh, background one darker 50 percent first column sixth row in the theme colors and then center the paragraph so the address line is uh, theme color and then centered so select the entire address line and then let's change the uh, theme color here so here's our uh, uh, font color and I'm using the theme color the first column is white background one and all the way at the bottom is darker 50 percent so the font color is the theme color white background one dark 50 percent and then center this paragraph do this under the home tab in the paragraph group we center it Insert a bottom paragraph border below the address line using the default. So put the cursor on the address line and then just in the paragraph group in the home tab, uh, select this uh, uh, borders and by default, we just want to use the bottom border. And if I turn on the feedback, I can see that I still have my page break. This is all happening above my page break. Uh, and I can see the spaces before and after the bullets and everything, and then can toggle that back off, whichever makes more sense to you, whichever view you like the most. Step 10 says to insert a new blank paragraph below the address line, apply the no spacing style to the paragraph, and then enter the following text. So let's go back to um, the blank line. If I Again, if I show the um, hide show option, I can place the cursor here to the left of the page break and enter in a new blank line and I want to apply the no spacing to that that's important because we're about to insert a lot of text so it's important that you apply the new spacing to this paragraph before you enter uh, complete this step in the next step after you do the no spacing uh, then enter the following text November 5th 2018 and copy that and I'm going to paste it. But again, I don't want to do the default paste because it'll get the formatting. I want to do the text only. So the drop down option from paste and the rightmost option there is keep text only. So there's uh, the date text only. Now, step 11 says insert a new blank paragraph below the date line, which we already did. We hit carriage return. And then insert all the text from the file support from the support file that ends in letter from the website. So let's go back to uh, the website here. And let's get this support file. When I click on this, uh, I'm going to save this to my desktop or wherever you save it on yours and pull it up. And here's what the support file looks like. It's the, the cover letter that we're writing. I say enable editing to get rid of the uh, yellow bar across the top. And I'll just select all and copy. Going back to my Word document, I will with the cursor on you know below the date but uh, above the page break I will paste text only and this is what I end up looking like on this page okay. so I've still got the table below me but I've got these paragraphs in here in this well where's the no spacing format It's all supposed to be no spacing format. I don't know why it didn't copy the no spacing format. But there we have uh, no spacing format. 
if you go back to the instruction document and scroll down to the preview what it's supposed to look like you can see that it's supposed to have um, pretty tight uh, which we know is no spacing format for this so I do want that no spacing format I don't know why it didn't uh, seem to stick before but starting including the date and all this text on this page should have no spacing format and it does okay back to our instructions uh, on the blank line on the last blank line on page one enter the uh, Enter and format the text as follows. Type sincerely as a complimentary close with a comma. So going back to our document that we're working on, the last blank line here. So let's put a blank line below it. Sincerely, comma. Insert three blank lines to make room for the signature. One blank line, two blank lines, three blank lines, and then the proper name. Nicole Rawlings. Notice that there's three blank lines between Sincerely and Nicole's name. So you want to have that. And then directly under Nicole Rawlings, we do enclosures and resume. Enclosures and resume. In close URES resume. URES resume. Okay. If I toggle off the uh, hidden and the not hidden, when I have the toggles off, this looks like what it should look like in the preview at the bottom of the instruction document. Nicole Rawlings enclosures resume. Okay. Step 13. In the table on page two, format the text in the left column to be a line top right and aqua accent one darker 25% for the color. So we're done with page one. There's some spelling errors we'll probably fix a little bit later. But right now we're moving on to page two. And on page two, they're telling us to format the column one. And we do this by moving the cursor over the column. We get a little down arrow icon. And when I select that, I'm selecting the entire first column. And I want to make a couple changes to it. I want to change the text to be a line top right. So with the chart selected, we get a design table layout and an align layout. Layout. Whew. Design tab and a layout tab. And in the layout tab, there is this option here to say align top right. And then in addition to doing align top right, we also have... Um, change the color of the text to be aqua accent one uh, 25 so I'm going to change the color of this text to be aqua accent one uh, darker 25 darker 25 aqua accent one darker 25 Aqua Accent 1, Darker 25, fifth column, fifth row in the theme color palette. Okay. Going back and looking at this, uh, the objective actually has a before spacing, but skills and experience doesn't have. So there's a little bit of space above objective that's intentional. So don't worry about that. And that's supposed to be there. Step 14, insert a new row into the table as follows. Insert a new first row. Okay, so let's just do these one step at a time. So in this table, with the table selected, we have uh, design options and layout options. And in the layout options, one of our options is to do uh, insert above. So select the top row, and I can say insert above, and it'll give me a new first row. Merge the cells in the new row. So with the new row selected, I'm going to select Merge Cells. This again is in the Table Tools Layout tab. And apply no spacing style to the cell. So for this selected, I'm going to go home and say no spacing as the style for that cell. Set a right tab stop at 6 and 5 half inch mark on the ruler. Now this one, first of all, if your ruler is not visible, you can go under View Ruler 
and you can see the ruler is not showing up now and view ruler check it and you can see this ruler so it might be helpful to see the ruler as we're doing this step um, and I'm supposed to put a right tab stop at six and a half now normally the way you would do that or one of the easiest ways to do that is to uh, switch the tab options over here on the left until you get to the right tab option which is this one it tells us it's a right tab and just come over onto your your sheet and click where you want the tab to appear but I can't actually get to six and a half so this is a little bit of a tricky step for us to do from a grading perspective because I can't do six and a half the table only goes to like 6.33 if I go as far to the right as I can and let go of it my tab is not at six and a half and it'll mark this wrong if I want to see where my tabs are I can go under the home tab the paragraph group and the tabs option and it shows me that my current tab is at 6.33 so I want to change this to be 6.5 and say okay now when I do that I now have a tab at 6.5 and I still have the old tab at 6.33 so I can delete that one drag it off or under the paragraph group under the tabs option if I see that 6.33 in this list I can select it and delete it from there or clear it from there but to satisfy this requirement there it's telling us it's going to look for a tab at the 6.5 so using this tab option would be the way to do it and you could have done that from the paragraph groups tabs just typed in a 6.5 right tab and uh, set it and been okay that way as well okay so now we have our tab and I can see on the ruler that it's actually between 6 and 7 it's at 6.5 even though it's outside technically of uh, the table it's what the instructions are asking us for so it's what we're going to do enter align the text shown in figure one below using control plus tab to do a tab inside of a cell so if you ever need to tab inside of a cell and you uh, and weren't aware or hadn't done it before you can do control tab because tab by itself will take you to the next cell of the table but control tab will find a tab within the, say, the table so we have the text Nicole Rawlings and then the phone number Nicole Rawlings and then again control tab stays within this to go to that six and a half um, tab markings and I want to type in this date uh, the phone number in parentheses 727 space 555 and that is a dash not a space so be careful here when entering this phone number and it's hard to see but that is a dash between 555 and 4512 not a period that and that space is just showing up because we've got the paragraph highlights where we see the little tabs um, so let's type that in now type in 727-555-4512 space 555-4212 727-555-4512 okay and then I can hit a carriage return and I will say uh, 8751 Picket Way. Eight seven five one Picket Way, comma Sandals, comma FL space three one five two four, and then Control Tab, and type in in Rawlings at Cengage.net. Okay, so we've typed in that information. If I toggle the uh, show hide, I'll see those symbols. I'll see this, the arrows that tell me I have tabs in there. I'll see the, uh, the spaces with little small circles and all of that. I can show and unhide those. Step 15, apply the list table three accent one style to the table so select the entire table and then apply the uh, 
from the list table down here kind of scroll down to the list table group and I think this one is list table 3 accent 1 change the height of the first row of the table to be 0 0.66 and then align the contents to be bottom cell so first change the height of the first row so with the cursor in the first row of the table in the layout option I can change the height to be 0 0.66 press enter and align the contents uh, to the bottom center of the cell so in the layout for just this first row um, there's the alignment option and then there is the align bottom center remove the bold from all the text in the first row except Nicole Rawlings and change the font size of Nicole Rawlings to be 16 point all this text is bolded now. If I go over to the uh, home group, I can see it's all been bolded. That was part of the style we applied. So I'm going to take the bold off of everything and then put it back on for Nicole Rawlings. So only Nicole Rawlings is bold and everything else is not bold. And the font size for Nicole Rawlings is going to be 16 point. So highlight Nicole Rawlings again and change it to 16 point. I can see it this way also, right? That's bold, 16 point. Uh, this text is not bolded, right? And the regular level point. Okay. Check the spelling and grammar. There should be at least one spelling error. Do not change proper nouns. So put the cursor somewhere inside the document and do the review tab, spelling and grammar. And let's see. Um, Cross training may include front desk, concierge was misspelled, so I want the correct spelling of concierge. Select that and change. Alex uh, Corvallis is a proper name, so you ignore proper names. Any other venue, we want venue to be changed, so highlight the correct, the first is the correct spelling, select change. And distributed throughout should be throughout, so I'll change that. So I actually made three changes there. Document should look like this, and I think that that is what we see on the preview. So things look good. Let's save your name underscore two. Make sure it's your name underscore two. Do a uh, save, close, and then we can uh, submit the file. So we'll do part three. We'll upload the file from the desktop or wherever you saved yours. Submit it. Should get the three check marks. And then let's see how we did looking at our report. And we got 100 out of 100. This is one that has a lot of nitpickiness about it. So go back and watch the video on any steps that you missed. Um, and sometimes errors will propagate. So hopefully uh, uh, this video will help you get a better score on this project. Have a good day.